Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome back to VA11 Hall A. Mega Christmas is over, it is the day after Mega Christmas. Oh, this is the 26th! Speaking of Christmas cakes, we talked about that earlier. <laughs> and we learned a lot about a lot of the characters. Not anything too profound, more like trivia type stuff, like the owner of Red Sheba, a little bit about Gillian, a little bit about Dana, Alma, Dorothy. But we didn't learn anything too profound, and a little bit about Jill. So that was kind of cool. But now we're back to work, and it's chapter 3. We're almost done with the game. I think the game ends on like day 18. We're on day 14. I could be wrong about the day 18 thing, I'm not sure. But we're close. And thank you guys so much for liking the crap out of this series. You guys have been absolutely incredible. And I'm glad you guys liked the truth or dare sequence that we did at the end as well of the last episode. Keep it up the likes. I know I keep mentioning it at the beginning of the video, but the reason why I mention it is just to remind you guys. I know that you guys do care about the videos, you care about the series, you care about the channel. And remembering to click like on a video isn't something that somebody always does when they don't do YouTube for a living. So, I just give you guys a little reminder at the beginning. So, thank you guys so much for leaving a like on this in advance, and I'll see what we can do here now that we got to go on to the 26th here, Monday. We need 10000 for rent, which is a ton! We got like four days to do it! I don't know how we're going to do that, honestly. I don't think we're going to have enough money for rent. I think I might have blown a little too much on buying a background with my nano camel stuff, and also there was a night that I did not get flawless service, so that's probably going to blow unless we get some sort of bonuses going on here. So, let's go ahead go to work because I'm pretty sure I bought the Alex figurine that I needed to last time yeah Jill can focus so we need to make like $7,500 in four days <laughs> that's gonna be tough so let's just go ahead and do it I guess is there anything actually I need to read here before we go into it Ooh, there's a little bit from the augmented eye glitch to the Olympics return next year Ooh, tenth consecutive year the GC Olympics returns to the emblematic super silver Thunderdome this time with a representative from the elusive country of Kanye Vania god damn Prime Minister Quincy, who is in charge of the committee, told the Augmented Eye that it wasn't easy getting in touch with Kanji. <laughs> and that we had to abide by some religious rules in order to see some of their best competitors come to the country. <laughs> Kanye Vania's main religion, Kanyeism, <laughs> prohibits the existence of nanomachines inside the body. Ooh. And as such, competitors from said country had to perform specific treatments in order to repel the swarm. It's a temporary solution, but it'll do the trick. I'm guessing the tacky bodysuits weren't practical for sports. Interesting. And Four is not talking. What the hell? You wouldn't believe what happens in this cartoon. Okay, cartoons are not for children. Well, let's see here. They're still largely colorful, but the themes they touch on are rather dark. In fact, every cartoon on air today has some dark themes. It has come to the point where an innocent animated character is no longer a thing. I suppose children are young adults from birth now. Dude, you can go ahead and look at like so many cartoons. There's usually like a lot of like sexual undertones in a lot of them, especially like early SpongeBob. Oh my god. But enter Touchy Fluffy Tail, a new show <laughs> that aims to challenge this current trend. No deep lore, no obscure adult preferences, no stupid deep plots, just fun with numbers and fluffy tails, said a TFT producer who asked to remain anonymous to avoid internet backlash. I don't want death threats for making a cartoon that's for actual kids. Oh god. Stop. I rescued you. I'll touch your tail if I wanna. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so there was no point to that? Street race at the Motor City. The Motor City District has been notorious for illegal street races it sees each week and the dozens of injured drivers it leaves every year. Oh. This time, it has been reported that two people died during a race hosted at the Gate Highway, otherwise known as Death Lane. Actually, my uncle, he died before I was even born because he was a... I don't know, he wasn't a street racer, but he raced... He raced some sort of, like, derby cars, and it, like, flipped, and he died. Which is really, like, sad. I never got to meet him, though, so it's not like I knew the guy or anything, but yeah, both of my uncles died. Actually, uh, my... In terms of my lineage on my, like, parent level. <laughs> on my mom's side, I actually have my mom, three aunts, and then two uncles. And I never met either of my uncles because they both died before I was born. My one uncle, I told you, he died before I was born because he was in a race and he flipped his vehicle, and that was the end of him. 
And then my other uncle actually should have died when he was like 10 or something like that. That's when they said he was going to die. He wasn't even going to make it to 10 years old because he had a birth defect. And he also had Down syndrome. And his birth defect was supposed to kill him at a very young age. He lived to be like 29. But yeah, I never met him either. Interesting, huh? Wow. I didn't even think about it. Like, that's the thing. I like, I never even think about these things because I never met them. But yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Huh. We have several suspects in regards to who is running this underworld, but nothing concrete as of yet. Chief of the Transmit Police Department, J. Esposito, told the Augmented Eye. The death of those two youngsters will be the last, however, that's a promise. I've heard there's a defamation campaign against the district, though. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. Well, we have read what we gotta read today. Let's go to work. On the last chapter. Oh my god, this is so sad. I'm like, I'm like devastated. This game's almost over, guys. <sighs> Good evening. <laughs> hey, Jill. Uh, Gil is in the back sorting. An ingredient shipment, and I've got things to do. The dog's in charge. Okay, bye. What? Wait, the dog? What? Okay, first order, pet me. No. <laughs> pet me. No. I'm in charge, and I want you to pet me. <laughs> Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, Jay. Won't pet you. You'll pet me sooner or later. They all do. <laughs> and if you do a certain variation of the truth or dare, we do pet him. So I wonder if this would be different if we would have gone through with petting him. Interesting. Won't! Will! You called? He said Will, not Gil. Ah. Who the hell is Will? Nobody. Don't be rude with poor Will. There's no Will! Do you need me to psych you up again? Shut up! Who, me or Will? <laughs> These guys are being so annoying. Ah! You go back to whatever you were doing! All right. And you, you stand by. Only if you pet me. Oh my god, go! <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> well, aren't we spirited today? Oh god. Welcome to Vaha. Virgilio? Why do you sound so weirded out? You didn't show up with a bombastic soliloquy. Well, putting up an act can be tiring, you know. Oh, ooh, it was an all an act! So it's all an act then. Wasn't it obvious? I guess. Would you mind getting me a Bleeding Jane? Sure. Um, Virgilio wants a Bleeding Jane. Weird. Oh my god, are we actually gonna learn a little bit more about this guy now? <laughs> crap. <laughs> crap. Okay, so I gotta start giving people, like, giant drinks, apparently, so I can start making money here. Otherwise, I'm gonna be so boned. Here you go. A Bleeding Jane. Yeah, so this is just the thing. So... If it was all just an act, why? So, tired of putting on the act, care to explain? It's a long story, and I'd honestly just not talk about it right now. Interesting. Fair enough, what made you change your mind, though? Well, for one thing, it's safer for me now. The pompous buffoon act was mostly a way to avoid raising suspicion. Huh? Safer? There's a word that's been losing meaning lately. Wait, that was your way of avoiding suspicion? Yes. You do know how weird that sounds, right? Sounds weird. You try not to raise suspicion, but you act like a- in a bombastic manner that screams you're there. And everyone dismisses the fool as a buffoon and moves on. Huh? I mean, you might be right if I were talking about hiding myself. But I'm avoiding a certain crowds of people. Yes, my behavior might call everyone's attention. But then everyone just decides I'm harmless and disregards me. Huh. And depending on how erratic my actions are, I become harder to read. Giving me yet another layer of enigma. I... Uh, huh. Well, congrats. No offense, but I fell right into your plan. <laughs> I just dismissed your actions as those of a fool and moved on. You completely fooled me. 
So here's who's the real fool here. Thanks. Say, can you give me something spicy? Yeah, uh, sure. Something spicy. Something spicy. Okay, let's do it. I think I'll go Bloom Light because he likes his promo drinks, doesn't he? Let's try a Bloom Light. Here you go. Oh. Aren't you fascinated by spiciness? What's spicy for humans might not be spicy for other animals. Hell, what's toxic for us might not be toxic for other creatures. Do you like spicy things, bartender? Yeah, I don't mind them, I guess, but I'm not really a fan. That neutral stance is actually weird to come across. Everyone either loves spicy things or hates them with a passion. Do you like it? Lots. Not only in regards to painfully spicy things, but also the way mild or a slight spice adds to a meal. I've always had this dream of opening a curry stand. Ooh, really? As things are, I might actually pursue that dream. I don't like spicy stuff. Like, I just, I just, not me, man. Like, if I go to B-dubs, Buffalo Wild Wings, I'm going up to like, what is it, honey barbecue? <laughs> That's about as high as I'm going. Even medium's a little too hot for me. Like, I just don't like it. Let me know if you do. I haven't had curry in ages now. Hey, bartender. Call me Jill. I wanted to apologize. Huh? You put up with me all this time without lashing out. I should apologize for my behavior and thank you for that. Uh, don't worry. I actually feel like I was too rude to you the last time you came. Granted, you came at a really bad time, but, uh... I should be the one apologizing. You are a client, after all. Well, don't. I'm actually surprised that nobody else had violently lashed out at me yet. You're making me curious as to who you really are, though. Especially with a question mark on your head. Is Virgilio even your real name? It might be, might not. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a magnet for people who hide their identities and sordid pasts. <laughs> Gil, Jamie, you... Um, did you say something? Yeah, just rambling, pay no mind. Now that I think about it, how did you find this bar? I was avoiding some chaps and came to this alley. Huh. Again. Again? In my time here, I've heard avoided people and ended up here enough times to make me believe that the original owner built the bar thinking about the runaway public. Ooh. You make me sound like a criminal. You're not helping. The expression runaway doesn't just mean people escaping the law, though. We've had people avoiding stalkers or solicitors. I've seen people more shocked by an insistent salesman than a shady figure. Well, uh, maybe because the salesman is more of an active predator? I don't know. A troublesome part of the city right near the shopping district. Let them know there's a bar and they'll come. Sorry, I should stop rambling so much to myself. I don't mind it. Do you think I'm some sort of criminal, though? Like I said, you're not helping. Wait, what? But for all I know, you might be of the buffoon I've seen the other days. In any case, can I get something bitter here? On it. Want something bitter? Let's do it. Grizzly Temple coming up. I'm trying to serve people expensive drinks now so I can start getting money for rent. Here. This works. Do you like coffee, Miss Bartender? As weird as it may sound from a smoking bartender, no, I don't. <laughs> well, I get it. It's not for everyone. That cat boomer the other day. What about her? Still scared of her? Not really, but she looks so familiar. Maybe you're mixing her up with another cat boomer? No, that's not it. It's like the bandage girl last time. Even with the bandages, there's still something really familiar about her. Didn't Stella say the same thing? Or say? One of those two said something that he looks familiar, right? I can't remember if they did. Maybe you need to stop thinking about it. Answers usually come when you stop stressing out. Ooh. You might be right. Well, I leave you for now, bartender. Thanks for everything. Huh. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hello, Mr. Detective. God, I want Mr. Donovan so bad! And here we are. Another mute person wandering into the bar. Anything I can get you? No, gut punch. Okay, gut punch for the silent detective. Here you go. Oh, you got it right. I always get it right. So what's up now? A bit of the holiday blues, you could say. So you celebrate Mega Christmas? Why wouldn't I? 
He looks more like a Festivus kind of guy. Why does everyone keep saying that? <laughs> well, Festivus is a celebration going against the capitalist madness that is Mega Christmas. And, you know, cheapskate. <laughs> if you have something to say, say it. I'll refrain. Ha! <laughs> Although, now that I think about it, Holiday Blues is not really tied to a specific celebration. Just the season. A season of consumerist craze. Mega Christmas is just a mockery of what real Christmas once was. I mean, the season has slowly become enslaved to the corporations over time. That's kind of how, like, Thanksgiving is nowadays, right? Thanksgiving is supposed to be in, in like a good good goody goody mindset is like celebrating family and things like that. Now if you go back to like the origin of Thanksgiving and things like that and like I feel like people get really offended really quickly because we just kind of like stole land from people and things like that. But like the 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 innocent meaning behind it is that just to celebrate with your family, right? But it's like turned into like a Black Friday weekend, basically. Like they, f sales are going on on like Wednesday now. The freaking day before Thanksgiving, freaking brick and mortar stores open at like 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving day instead of like midnight for Black fr Friday. Like, I don't know. It's weird, man. It's pretty much what it's turned into, just trying to make a dollar. It's really, um, I feel like part of the reason for that is because of the internet. Because these stores have to open earlier now in order to keep up with the, de the deals that are online, right? Man. Holiday spirit can only be manipulated so much. But then came that turbo mail guy. He just started a yearly tradition of dressing up like Santa in the ring. Turbo mail? That can't be his ring name. It is. Really? Such a tacky name was accepted? His partner was Buster Master, and his rival was Dr. Chris Max. Tacky names were not a problem. <laughs> I mean, I knew there was a wrestler that dressed as Santa every year. I also knew that the guy became insanely popular, and the stunts got out of control. And, of course, that's the part everyone sings about. Santa became... Mega Santa. Thanks to the Redman family. You mean Mega Santa? Is that another typo? Oh my god! Mega Santa sees the error of his ways, maybe not, and becomes the mighty Mega Santa, renaming the holiday to Mega Christmas. Okay, so it's either another typo, or a Mega Santa is like a negative Santa. I don't know. And then every company jumped on the bandwagon, and Christmas was Mega Christmas before anyone noticed. And you're telling me that the guy who somehow managed to rename the holiday went to buy the ring name of Turbo Mail. Yup. That makes the whole holiday sound like a joke. The whole holiday is a joke! And you're telling me you don't celebrate Festivus? <sighs> no, I don't. Do you know what kind of people celebrate Festivus? The kind that's so lame and bland that they can only talk about how they're better because they celebrate Festivus? <laughs> Like those jerks that only eat nuke. Nuke. And think they're better than everyone else. Nuke. What's the nuke? I see. Anything else I can get you? Give me a fringe weaver, will ya? Sure thing. Ooh, we can get him super drunk. He's a fringe weaver. Alright, thanks. So, any issues with the city lately? What's the word on the street? Shouldn't I be asking that? There's nothing new, really. The lynchings of the White Knight stopped, so there's that. Really? Something about the armor. I haven't gotten much on that one yet. All in all, the madness following the attack on the bank seems to have settled down a bit. Yeah, what's going on with Alice Rabbit, by the way? That's good to hear. Have any other details about the attacks that emerged yet, or the attack that emerged yet? All records of whatever happened there have been long deleted. Security cam, system logs, everything was wiped. Ooh, that's sketchy. Whatever happened there, it's become even more of a mystery now. Maybe Say would know. Yeah. I wonder if Say plans on testifying. Oh god, maybe she shouldn't. Does anyone know if Say went there in the first place? Ooh. Maybe the wiping of everything actually protects her somehow. Yeah, no kidding. Hey, bartender, are you okay? Sorry, I got distracted. There's not much to say, really. There's a, the odd, silly rumor here and there, like the vending machines, tasers malfunctioning and applying more strength. 
or that the writer of the last rain in the world is actually living here as a brain in a jar. Ha! We know about that guy, don't we? But those are the kind of rumors you hear from crackheads. We met the brain in the jar. Crackheads might hold that one last piece of info you need, but you also hear crap like that. I see. Anyway, I'm leaving. Happy New Year, bartender. Please come again. Okay then, yeah. The Baba. Oh, wait, no, she's out. Gil, you there? Yeah, you taking a break? Let me know if someone comes in. Hmm. Interesting. God, it just feels so weird to have it so close to the end. Oh my god, I didn't know she wears short shorts with tights. That's hot. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. Dude, it's almost over. God, the game's almost over, guys. <laughs> Things are pretty quiet outside. Oh, let's just see what we're getting ourselves into here. Hey, it's you! Kim! Ah, Miss Kim. How you doing, Kim? So we're gonna talk to Kim next time. We're gonna get her a beer. Cool! So, thank you guys for watching some Ball Hollow here with me. Oh my god, we're getting close to the end, guys. It's almost there, it's almost there, it's almost there, it's almost there. Go ahead and leave a like if you've been enjoying Ball Hollow and you want to see us get to the end. We're so close. We're so close. Again, I think it's like... Five more videos max. And this is like part like 20-something. <laughs> this is like the longest series we've ever done on the channel. This might even be longer than Corpse Party. Holy crap. So, I'm glad you guys have been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. It's been fun, but oh my god, it's taking forever. So, thank you guys once again. You guys are amazing. Leave a like, subscribe, that type of crap, in case you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video that we do around here. Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint, and welcome to a game called The Final Station. This game was made by Tiny Build Games, the same people that have been behind so many amazing games that you see around on YouTube. Speedrunners comes to mind, Party Hard comes to mind, and this game is a little bit different, but it's going to have a similar art style to what you've seen in a lot of the tiny build games. The final station.